Hi, this is Dodger, and you're watching my show. Three, two, one, ready, go. I didn't check to see if there was anything weird on my shelves. No, I think we're good. Every now and then I make a video or I stream and I look in the background when I'm already making it or already streaming and I think, ooh, I f probably people didn't need to know that there were four pizza boxes back there. Nobody really needed to know that I had boba like three days in a row. But hey, sometimes it's good for y'all to see the real me. Kind of like, right, <laughs> like right before this video, I had this blanket up like this. Um, and thought maybe the giant Pikachu was too alarming. So I, I pulled him down. I killed him. I think we should put him back up there. He looks so sad down there. And look up here, he's so happy. Okay, so today's episode is going to be entirely about BlizzCon. I went for one day. I was able to play both Diablo and uh, Sombra in Overwatch. So I'll be able to give a, a little bit of a look-see that way, but really we're just gonna cover like the major news stuff that happened which e with each game. There was actually quite a bit of stuff. I think people were expecting something a bit more earth-shattering, like, like one thing that was gonna blow all of our minds, right? Specifically about Diablo. And it didn't really happen, but they did have lots of little things to tell us about all of the games. So most of this is going to be Overwatch information. Um, I'm also at the very end going to talk a little bit about uh, like the Overwatch World Cup and, and all of that and sort of who won in, in all of the competitive situations. So if you would rather not find out about those, I'll give you a little heads up before we start talking about it so that you can be like, bye! So Diablo! Diablo was the one where people thought maybe they were going to announce Diablo 4, maybe they were going to announce a new expansion for Diablo 3, and neither of those things happened. But we did get Necromancers, which I'm super into. Makes me feel a little bad because I like throw my little skeleton buddies out there to just explode and die, but man, it's, it's a satisfying class to play. And the boy looks like Lucius Malfoy and the girl looks like Morticia. They're adorable. Anyway, so yeah, the Necromancer has all of their little skeleton buddies. This is an, an old class that hasn't existed in Diablo 3 before, obviously, but it, it did exist in past iterations of Diablo. So um, you are basically a commander of many undead skellies that hang out around you. You've got 10, I believe, and you have abilities like you can... Um, in the demo, your four ability was wherever your cursor was hovering, you could funnel all of your dudes to attack that one spot. So if you would rather be a bit more specific about who or what they're attacking at any given moment, you can definitely do that. That's what that ability is for. And from what I saw, there was not really any cooldown. You were just like, all right, you go wherever I want you to go. Um, you've also got a big AOE slow, which helps with that. And your very first ability is to make all of your skeletons explode, which was a big draw. I've come to understand people were very excited that exploding skeletons was the thing. Whether or not you're going to have like bone wall and things like that, um, not confirmed as far as I know. But again, I only got to see the abilities that existed in the demo. So for any of us who have played Diablo 3, you know there are lots of different abilities that you can sort of swip swap around and, and build your class however you'd like. So I'm sure that those sorts of abilities that are a bit more iconic are still going to exist. In addition to unlocking the Necromancer as a playable character, players will also receive an in-game pet, two additional character slots, two additional stash tabs on PC, a portrait frame, pennant banner, and banner sigil. So this will be a pack. This is going to be a pack of things that you will buy that includes the class. We don't know about the price. Um, looking around, it doesn't seem like any kind of a price was ever talked about. I can't imagine it being very high. Diablo 3, again, like with the seasons, they've managed to keep people coming back and playing more and more of it. Um, I've been playing at least a little bit almost every season. It, it gets me intrigued and it's always fun to, you know, have a throwaway hardcore character. But, um, it's still not one of their best performing games, right? 
So I would be really surprised if this pack wound up being a lot of money. They have kind of an overview of what the Necromancer is, kind of an FAQ up on the Blizzard website, so I will link that in the description below. As for other Diablo news, the other big thing is that they're remaking Diablo inside of Diablo 3. Celebrate 20 years of Diablo by traveling back into the depths of the cathedral, where it all began in this upcoming Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls content update. Get ready to explore a monster-filled dungeon 16 levels deep, and come face to face with the four main bosses from the original game, all with retro touches like special graphics filters and eight direction character movement. That's gonna be so frustrating to play. I don't think we realize how much modern games have affected our expectations for a game, right? I think that there are gonna be plenty of people who say, oh my god, I get to play Diablo again. Like regular Diablo inside of Diablo 3, that's gonna be so fun, but it's gonna have eight direction character movement, which is gonna be so frustrating to people. And also, they say retro touches like special graphics filters. When they were up on stage explaining this, they, they made an effort for us to understand that this game was gonna look terrible. They want it to look old and, and bad by our standards now, right? And some of you are gonna take offense to that. I don't, I don't mean that Diablo was a bad game, but I do think that our expectations for what games should look like and how they should feel are very different now. It just came across as a response to players who are constantly talking about how much they miss the old games. And I've seen a lot of commenters being like, I can't wait to play Diablo in a really good system like Diablo 3. And I feel like they're completely glossing over, <laughs> they're completely glossing over those bits of information that are saying, no, this is, we are making an effort to make this still feel like Diablo. Anyway, those were the big Diablo things. I will say that when I was walking around with like Toast and Kristen and them, Toast and I were just dying to play Necromancer. Out of all of the things that they announced, I don't think that they expected for people to be so excited about Necromancer. That line was bananas. It took forever to be able to get your hands on Necromancer and be able to play it. I was fortunate enough to be able to play it in the media area, but that line was so long and the area that they had for Diablo was really, really small. Like the, literally the only explanation I can think of is that they didn't, they didn't expect for people to be excited about this, like as excited as they were. All right, should we like get Overwatch out of the way? There is a lot of Overwatch information, a ton. Of course, we can always start off with Sombra. The ARG is finally over, right? It should be. I also sort of feel like when I say ARG in this sense, I should put quotes around it. It didn't feel like an ARG to me, it felt like an ARG. So Sombra was finally revealed at the keynote at the very beginning of BlizzCon. Most people thought that that was going to be the case. There were also lots of rumors going around that Sombra was going to hack BlizzCon. I think some of us expected that to be in a much larger sense. What it actually wound up being was that they went into the Overwatch section, they were showing, you know, a video of Jeff Kaplan and other members of the team, like, talking about how great Overwatch is and, and all the plans that they have for it, and then it slowly started to fall apart, right? Like, the image started to fall apart, and we had the, like, boo! screen and all that and then the Sombra symbol showed up. Um, that was the extent of the Sombra's hacking BlizzCon. But it's still, it, it was cool. It was still really, really cool. And then we got to see a, a short that had Sombra in it, which was also a really good way to have us understand her character and also parts of her kit. So I kind of appreciated that as well. Of, of course, their animations are always fantastic. But that's another thing. I'll link down there if you would like to watch it. You absolutely should, um, especially if you're an Overwatch fan. But um, Sombra in the animation is painted as a out for herself sort of a character, right? Like very capable, but not necessarily on a team. Um, she's working with Talon in the video, so there is that, but, but you're like, mm, but Sombra's out for Sombra, right? <laughs> like, that's, that's very evident. Her kit is really cool, though. She's actually listed as a damage character, and she has lots of get-in, get-out abilities. Um, her gun has pretty good range. Sam and I were arguing about this a little bit, because I thought that her gun had, like, pretty intense range for the sort of gun that it was. He didn't think that it did because the accuracy wasn't there at all if you were shooting something that was really far away, which is always the case. 
Um, but in terms of her abilities, she has invisibility. Her shift is going invisible. The cooldown on that is not very long. And when you're invisible, you go super fast. You like, you like book it, right? So that's really nice if you're doing lots of get in, do some damage, get out sort of tactics. Um, so there's that. I don't think that the invisibility would be good for getting away. At first I did, but again, Sam and I talked a lot about <laughs> Sam and I talked a lot about Sombra, okay? And Sam was saying that because if you were playing against somebody who was really good, they would be able to guess where you went once you were invisible, and they'd they'd be able to guess where to shoot. And the second that you're shot, you're not invisible anymore. Um, the other thing that you have is a teleporter. You have this, this little machine that you can drop anywhere on the map. You actually throw it. You can throw it anywhere on the map. And then at a certain point, it's your E ability, at a certain point whenever you need to get away, you hit E and you teleport to wherever you dropped that thing. Um, you can teleport through it while it's still in the air. You can, you know, throw it so that you can get somewhere. It doesn't have to be a get out. It can be a get in. Uh, I think that if, I think that when people get really good with her, it's going to be a problem. Like, <laughs> it's going to be devastating for a lot of teams to have a really, really good Sombra on the opposing team. The other thing that a lot of people sort of expected was going to be an ability of hers is, is like a, a hack ability, right? She can make it so that you can't use your abilities for a few seconds, and her ultimate is a blast, an EMP blast is what it's being called, a blast that takes away all shields and makes it so that no one can use their ult for a few seconds. So that's another thing that's pretty cool. And she just feels really good to play. She's really, really fun. But I will say, when I played her, it was six Sombras versus six Sombras. So she's just built in a way where she's going to upset a lot of tactics, right? When Ana was made, when Ana was put into the game, a lot of people thought that she was way overpowered because she upset a lot of tried and true tactics. And I think that Sombra is going to be the same way for sure. Speaking of tactics, they're completely overhauling play of the games. Um, whether that means that they're going to make it so that the algorithm is very different for who they choose as getting, you know, all of the credit, or if they're trying to figure out a way where multiple people can have play of the game, that's, we're not really sure. There's a plan to do what we're calling play of the game 2.0. It's been on the books for a little while. It's just a matter of prioritizing everything. We have a lot of really cool ideas. We want to do a lot with the camera work. We have ideas for cooperative play of the games because what we have right now is Zarya could ult and Genji gets the credit. And that's like, oh, come on. So yeah, they're talking about having a play of the game system where two people could get the credit, where people who you know, help out a lot are like the primary person who set something up could potentially get credit. A lot of problems have always existed with play of the game, um, but I think at this point a lot of us really just accept it. I would love to see some combo play of the games. And then what was mentioned in a couple of articles is I would love it if the you know how you get to choose your, your victory, your, your like victory thing for when you get play of the game and it's you looking super cool? I want to see combo versions of those. But then you wouldn't be able to choose what it looked like, right? It would be like a once in a blue moon sort of situation, but I would love that. Like if Junkrat and Zenyatta got a combo play of the game and Junkrat looks really upset <laughs> in the like, congratulations screen. That would be amazing. I want that sort of stuff because again, one of the big draws for Overwatch is how awesome their characters, or their characters are. It's how great their characters are, right? And everybody, even when initially a few people go, I don't know how I feel about that character, they run their way into your hearts, man. Some people are looking at Sombra and being like, she looks like a cyberpunk nightmare, and I'm into that. Anywho, I feel like this overhaul of play of the game is going to take a long time. It's going to be a lot of engineering effort, right? So I don't expect for that to happen anytime soon. I wonder if they said that they're planning on it happening soon. Hmm, it doesn't look like it. They just want us to know that they're that they're thinking about it, that they know that it's all borked. The last big Overwatch thing is that they're working on arcade mode to kind of combat how they're switching up quick play because quick play starting on Monday, starting tomorrow, 
is supposed to have an overhaul where you can only have one of each character on your team at a time. Um, and some people not excited about that. So the arcade mode is going to give you more options. It's going to be like essentially what, what quick play is right now. So like a no limit 6v6, right? But also um, 1v1, 3v3 elimination, 6v6 mystery. So it's just everybody's rando and uh, 6v6 all brawls. All brawls is basically like a playlist. So you would just hop into it and then it would just cycle through all different brawls, old brawls, the newest brawl, whatever, right? Not future brawls because that would ruin the surprise. But I like that because there are gonna be some brawls that we really miss, like the Junkenstein one. We're gonna really miss that brawl. Never even beat the medium difficulty on that brawl and I'm still gonna miss it. What I really like about the 1v1 is that you're both the same hero, so neither of you gets to choose. The game is just like, all right, you're, you're both Genjis now, and then it plops you on a, a much smaller map so that it's a lot easier to have a 1v1 battle, but um, I, think that the, I think that that's just so silly. I love that they're creating this sort of a system where it's like, do you want to just have fun? Go over here. <laughs> we have lots of fun, weird options over here. Do you want to cry a little? then go to rank. Oh, that's right. That was the other thing that I wanted to mention about arcade. I was like, there was something else about this that I thought was cool. And I remember now, um, they heard a lot of feedback from people who were playing brawls saying it kind of sucks that we can't get loot boxes from this. Like there's no reward for us to play this game mode other than to just be like, all right, well, that was a goofy time. I'll go do some other stuff now. Right? So you can earn three, th three loot boxes a week from playing arcade modes, any arcade mode. So I think that that's cool too. Some quick heroes of the storm stuff is you have two new characters, Varian and Ragnaros. Varian is going to be the very first multi-class hero to enter the Nexus, and both he and Ragnaros are melee characters. It looks like Varian is intended to just like soak damage. That's kind of what he does, just be be the shield that his team deserves. Ragnaros, this sounds pretty cool. Ragnaros can empower a fort or a keep. So he can actually like add extra protection to some of that. Blackheart's Revenge is also a new map that you can play on Heroes of the Storm and it sounds super fun. Like looking at it, it already looks cool, but hearing the way that it's intended to be played is awesome. So one team is trying to protect the ship as it's moving closer and closer toward the enemy core. And then the other team is trying to collect cannonballs to fire at the ship to sink it. So good. I just like that with every update to Heroes of the Storm, they're making it a little bit weirder, right? And TB and Jesse and I have talked about this a lot on Co-Optional, but um, I, I just really like that they're sort of taking it to heart that Heroes of the Storm is a silly game. Like it's a fun, silly, weird game and that people appreciate having fun, silly, weird things added to it. They're also doing what they're calling the Nexus Challenge, and you can get a Genji skin in it. I mean, if there's a way to get more people to play Heroes of the Storm, it's to tell them that you can have an Oni Genji skin. I'm into that. Complete 15 Heroes games in Ranked, Unranked, Draft, Quick Match, or Co-op vs. AI before time runs out, and you'll unlock the Oni Genji skin, Spray, and a player icon in Overwatch, as well as Zarya and the Oni Genji portrait in Heroes of the Storm. Rewards? only get sweeter when you play more games. Finish 30 matches and you'll pick up even more heroes, the slick new Orochi hover cycle mount, and a 30 day stim pack. So you know they're trying to add incentives for people to play Heroes of the Storm and I don't blame them. You know how earlier we were talking about how Diablo 3 isn't like their best performing game? Heroes of the Storm is not one of their best performing games either. Both are very fun, but both need some kind of an incentive to get people to come back and play it. Heroes of the Storm is going about the, the sort of multi-game aspect of like, if you play this game, then you get stuff for these games, right? Whereas Diablo has been utilizing seasons and it's worked really well. Um, I do think that the people who consistently play Heroes of the Storm really enjoy it. And again, that they like the sort of content that's coming in. All right, World of Warcraft. You guys ready to go into space? <laughs> um, World of Warcraft, they announced that with the 7.3 patch, I believe, let me double check that actually, before I, before I commit to that, 7.3 patch is going to take you into space. You're gonna go to a totally different planet. Azeroth ain't the new hotness anymore. And again, this isn't an expansion. This is like something that's going to happen in a huge patch to Legion. And I think that that's pretty cool. Everybody's gonna go to Argus 
And that's going to be a whole new world. And they're going to have so many options for how they go at that, right? It's going to be great. I think it's going to be great for players. It's going to be really great for the Blizzard team because they've been stuck with Azeroth. Not that there's anything wrong with Azeroth again. But, like, <laughs> but you know, it's that's been the world of Warcraft for so long for so long that I think going to a new place that's still very much involved with the World of Warcraft story is going to be really nice for them from a design aspect and also for players for a, a, a breath of fresh air, if you will. So that's 7.3. 7.2, no, 7.2 isn't even out yet. 7.3, going into space. 7.2, there's going to be a new raid. Um, you're going to be able to fly across all of the Broken Isles, which a lot of people are very excited about. There's going to be new mounts for everyone that all have flying capabilities in that area. And um, the raid is called Tomb of Sargeras. I think that's the name of the patch in general. Oh god, 7.1.5 isn't even out yet. That looks like it's just more of a bug fix patch though, because it's a 0.5, you know. Um, but 7.2 is going to add Tomb and some story stuff, and then 7.3 is going to be a big story patch. So that's something to look forward to for sure. Y'all go into space. It seems like it makes sense with the story of Legion, right? It seems like it makes sense for it to all sort of culminate in Argus. That's gonna be cool. And finally, Hearthstone, they have a new expansion coming out called the Mean Streets of Gad Gadgetstan. Gad Gadgetzan. It's a port city, I don't know. But something that's super, super cool about this that I was reading about is that there are going to be specific cards that are tri-class, which has never been done before because specific classes within Hearthstone are going to apply to different factions inside of Mean Streets. So um, Grimy Goons is going to be Hunters, Paladins, and Warriors. The Cabal is going to be Mages, Priests, and Warlocks. And then the Jade Lotus is going to be Druids, Rogues, and Shaman. So what that means is there are going to be specific cards that can only be used by your faction, which hasn't been done before. In every other iteration of Hearthstone, it's been, okay, so this specific card for your class can only be used by your class, right? Otherwise, it can be used by everybody. So in this situation, it's going to be new cards that can only be used by three classes. I think that'll be kind of cool. Uh, Gadget Zan! I had to rewatch the cinematic in order to... <laughs> I had to rewatch the cinematic in order to double check how you say that name. And then I wound up watching the whole thing because it's so delightful and cute. Anyway, that's what you have to look forward to in Hearthstone. Um, that was really the only major thing that they talked about having to do with Hearthstone, as far as I know. Aside from the Hearthstone World Championship, which makes this perfect, this perfect segue. If you don't want to find out anything about who won at any of the BlizzCon stuff, right? We had Hearthstone World Championship. We had Overwatch World Cup. We had Heroes of the Storm. Uh, what do they call it for Heroes of the Storm? Anyway, we had it. Look, there were just so many competitions in every single Blizzard game. So if you don't want to know how any of those turned out, leave. <laughs> please, please leave this video. Are you good? Are you gone? All right. So South Korea won most things. Um, I guess that's not fair to say. They won StarCraft II. They won Heroes of the Storm. And they won Overwatch. And then Russia won Hearthstone. And the winners of uh, World of Warcraft Arena was a, what is called just a European team. So as always, we're, we're falling a little behind. <laughs> we're falling a little behind to South Korea. But Blizzard did announce that they're putting together an Overwatch Esports League. Which is fascinating because as much as every single BlizzCon... The majority of people want to sit and watch really good players of the game of their choice, right? Like my very first BlizzCon, I spent most of my time just sitting watching StarCraft and it was so fun and it was fascinating to watch really, really good StarCraft players, right? And I did a lot of the same thing with Overwatch. I sat and watched a lot of Overwatch while I was at BlizzCon um, because it's you already have a love for this game, right? And then seeing somebody who's really, really good at that game is satisfying. But let's be real, esports still not accepted to the mainstream at all. Like, if something that has to do with esports shows up on, say, ESPN, um, it's noted as being interesting. 
and that's mostly it. So Blizzard putting together an actual professional sports league for Overwatch, I think is going to be the first step toward us treating ourselves the same way that other sports treat themselves. There's probably, just full disclosure, a lot about this that I don't entirely understand and, and may be um, miscommunicating because I don't watch sports. I don't understand how sports rosters work like normal ones, right? So esports rosters, again, still not entirely accessible to me, um, but I am a viewer and I'm excited at the prospect of my viewership being considered just as awesome as the viewership of, say, an American football team. Again, there's like a big write-up on this as well as a trailer and all kinds of good information. You can find that in my description at the link below, so you should go and read any of that because, again, literally any of you could wind up on one of these teams if you're good enough. If you put in the time, if you put in the same amount of time that South Korea does, but anywho, that's kind of my roundup of all of the BlizzCon 2016 information. I was not disappointed by anything, really. Um, I know some people were, though, so feel free to discuss in the comment section, as always be respectful of one another. Have, have good, open, honest communication without telling one another that they're dummy poo-poo heads. And also, as always, if you would like to watch my live streams, you can find them at twitch.tv slash dexteritybonus. Have a fantastic day and a lovely rest of your week, and I'll see you next time. All right? Bye-bye. Mwah. Oh, look up here, he's so happy.